Now we're going to look at methods for finding the domain in the range of a graph of a function. Now this time we're not looking at separated points, we're looking at a picture where the graph is connected in some way. Now in the first graph on 13, it has a closed in point, it's like a starting point for the graph, and it's located at the ordered pair negative 2 comma 1. And then the graph kind of goes up to a high point at 0, 5, and then it goes back down, and it has an ending point that is an open circle located at 3, comma, negative 4. But in between negative 2, 1 and 3, negative 4, it's connected. So the domain of the graph, it's not possible to list as a set the individual points. You cannot say it's hitting negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3 because you're leaving out all of the fractions and decimals and um, irrational numbers located on the number line between negative 2 and negative 1 and between negative 1 and 0 and so on. So it's impossible to list all of those individual numbers. So when it's connected like this, we list the domain as an interval. And the interval goes from the lowest value in the domain to the highest. So the lowest value in the domain corresponds to the leftmost point on the x-axis. So it starts at x equals negative 2. And then you put a comma. And it stops at the open circle which is at x equals 3 and it's connected all the way from that negative 2 to the positive 3. Now you need to choose either to write brackets or parentheses around those values. When a point, an, an ending point on a graph is closed in, then you lock in that point on the domain with brackets. So brackets are used for defined closed in endpoints. If you have an endpoint that is open, that means that that's a hole in the graph. It is the ending position, but it's not included in the domain. Then we use parentheses. So brackets locks it in and it's defined. Parentheses is for open circles or if it has no ending in the domain, like maybe it goes forever to the right, then it would go to infinity, and that would also be an open-ended interval, so you would put parentheses on that. Okay, so the domain goes left to right for the x-axis. The range of the graph is your vertical position going up and down. Again, it's connected, so we just want to locate the lowest value in the range and then the peak or the highest value. So the lowest coordinate on this graph corresponds to negative 4 on the y-axis. And then the graph goes up, 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 up forever until it hits the high point at 5. So negative 4, 5 is the range. At negative 4, it's an open circle, so we put parentheses around that endpoint. At 5, we don't see an open circle or a closed circle, but it is just a normal point on the graph. So when we have normal points on the graph, we do brackets because that point is included in the range. So the only time you'll use parentheses for a number is if that number is an open circle point. Our next graph has an open circle beginning point located at the ordered pair negative 5 comma 5 and then it kind of goes down and it ends at the ordered pair 5 comma negative 2. So the domain of this graph goes left to right and it starts at the x-axis negative 5 and it's connected all the way through until we travel to positive 5 on the x-axis. So negative 5 comma 5 is our interval. Now at negative 5, it's an open circle, so we put parentheses around it. And at positive 5, also it's an open circle, so we put parentheses around that coordinate. The range, we want to now check going up and down. So now you want to look at the lowest point on the graph, and then where's the highest point? 
So my lowest point is at the y coordinate negative 2. And then the graph goes up. Now it has an intercept where it crosses the y axis between 1 and 2, but you, that the intercept is not your highest point. The highest point is located at the peak at negative 5, 5. So along the y axis, it's going to be an interval from negative 2, comma 5. Both of those endpoints are open circles, so we put parentheses around those endpoints in the range. Our next graph, number five, 15, has actually two separate pieces that are graphed and they're not connected with each other. So the domain is going to have to sort of do this separately. We're going to do the domain for the leftmost piece and then we'll do the domain for the right piece. So the left piece starts at x equals negative 2 and that section ends at x equals 0. Both of the endpoints of that piece are open, so we do parentheses around the negative 2 and the 0. Now we, there is a gap on the x-axis from 0 to 1. There isn't anything graphed. So when there's a gap in the domain, we do a union and we pick up with the next interval. So our next interval starts at x equals 1 and it stops at x equals 5. Both of those endpoints are open, so we put parentheses around those. Okay, so the range is now going up and down. So locate the lowest point for either of these sections, and the lowest point is at the ordered pair, 0, negative 1. So negative 1 is going to be the beginning of our interval for the range. Now as I travel up on the y-axis, I'm looking at that leftmost piece, and that's graphing all these y-coordinates up to y equals 3. But there isn't any gaps between 3 and 4 because 3 and 4 is graphed by this other section of the graph that's traveling up. And that other graph ends at 4. So there aren't any gaps along the y-axis between these two sections. So it's going to be one interval from negative 1 to 4. Both of these endpoints are open circles, so we do parentheses around them. 16 is another graph where we have two different sections that are graphed. So start with the domain and look at the leftmost section. And it's going to begin at negative 1 on the x-axis. And as you go to the right, it stops at x equals 1. Now the point negative 1 is open, so we do parentheses. But at the point located at 1, negative 3, it's closed, so we do brackets. And as I travel left to right, there's a gap between where 1 is and 3 is. So since nothing is graphed there, we're going to do a union. And we're going to So the second interval is going to pick up where x equals 3. And then this piece goes all the way to x equals 5. So 3 comma 5 is the second interval. Both of those endpoints are locked in closed points, so we do brackets around those endpoints 3 and 5. Now for the range going up and down, locate the lowest point for both pieces. And the lowest point for both pieces is located at a y value of negative 4. So the interval for the range will begin at negative 4. Now as you follow that piece up, it's covering the y-axis all the way up to 2. And it also overlaps that other piece, so they have the same y values. So one interval for the range is going to be from negative 4 up to positive 2. Both of those endpoints were locked in and closed circles, so we do brackets around those values. Our next graph is called a, the greatest interval function, and it looks like a step graph. There are definitely gaps going vertically. Um, so let's start with the domain and locate left to right and see if there's any gaps. So the leftmost point is at x equals negative 5 and that little section goes from negative 5 to negative 1. But if you notice the section above it picks up with negative 1 and goes to 3. So they overlap each other and that closed in circle is going to close in the one below it that's open. 
So right now there aren't any gaps. I'm not going to end my interval yet. So it starts at negative 5. It's going, going to the right, following that section, and then it ends at 3. But the piece above it has that same position at 3, and it continues the domain up until 7. So the domain is going to have one interval without any breaks or gaps from negative 5 to 7. Now at negative 5 it's closed, so we do brackets, and at the position 7 it's open, so we do parentheses. Okay, for the range, locate the lowest value, lowest point, and that's going to be at negative 4. Now as I move up, you'll see that there's a big gap. The graph jumps from negative 4, it's not connected, and then it has another y value at 1. And then there's another gap all the way up to 7. So just those three numbers are going to be in the range. So when that happens, it's not an interval from low to high. You just list those separated numbers, negative 4, comma 1, comma 7, and you list it as a set. So you use the roster parentheses there. 18 is a, is a line, it's a horizontal line going left and right forever. So the domain of this graph covers all x's and on the x-axis to negative infinity to positive infinity. So the domain is negative infinity comma positive infinity. We always do parentheses around the infinity symbol. And then the range going up and down, well this graph only hits one y value of negative 2. So when it's a single number or it's single values that aren't connected, you use the roster parentheses for that.